Hello and welcome to my Rock Files podcast with your host, Mark Chatterton. Today, I would like to welcome onto my programme one of the most hardworking and nicest front men you could ever meet. He is an excellent guitarist, songwriter and vocalist who has been treading the boards for many years now in such bands as the Blackwater Blues Band, the Nimmo Brothers and, of course, King King. King King have grown over the years into one of Britain's best-loved rock blues bands and they have now released five albums, with the latest being Maverick. Today, I will be chatting to their founder and frontman, Mr. Alan Nimmo. So a warm welcome to you, Alan. Oh, hello there. Nice. That's a wonderful introduction, actually. It makes me think <laughs> quite you. That's good, <laughs> good. Um, I'll, I'll start off with the fact that just a few weeks ago, King King played their first gig for a long time at mm. the Homeforth Picture Dome. And you must have felt like a huge weight had come off your shoulders when you played in front of a live audience once again. It was, uh, you know, it was really special. Not not only because we that was the first time we'd been on a stage for almost two years, um, but to go in and, and play at home for, which is a kind of, it's becoming a kind of regular haunt for, for yeah, King, yeah. especially, you know, with um, with the, the sort of, the central sort of fan base, sort of, it's a nice place for them to come together and it's a great venue as well. So it was like... Um, it was like it was like going to a party and meeting up with all your family and friends. <laughs> it was just fantastic. <laughs> yeah. A really great atmosphere. I, yeah, I mean, it was. I, I don't want to. I don't want to say it was nerve wracking, but it was. It was a bit strange. It was a bit strange that um, you know when you think about how long it's been since we'd actually maybe able to do anything. How long it had been actually since obviously just a few days before, uh, you know, uh, not counting rehearsals, but since the, even the boys in the band and I had, mm. had been in the same room together. Been a while, but I, yeah, but but after a while, I, I remember at some point during the the whole process of the day, um, we were sitting in the dressing room, and and all of a sudden, everything felt like I'd never been away. <laughs> it, was a, it was a really strange thing. It was it was familiar, that, but but it was strange at the same time. But I, it's, it's weird to describe. But it was a fantastic atmosphere and a great night, and um, we're so pleased with how it went, and we're so pleased with how many people turned up as well. So it was, that's, we that's good. Up. Yeah, because I know obviously um, with COVID and the pandemic and everything, you personally have been affected by COVID and you you had it, didn't you, in yeah. the end of last year? Yeah, it was, uh, it was um, I got it at the Christmas and New Year time and uh, it was, it was, I got it particularly badly, yeah, I was, I was, I was in a bit of a, a bad way for a little while, to be mm. honest. Um, but, um, but, you know, that's that's me along with with countless others, you know. And I was I was lucky enough to to come through it in the end, and and and, and I've been all right ever since. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it's just been a, a tremendous struggle for for everyone. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 you know, and especially the music the music industry, you know, where it's been a little bit difficult. A lot of uh, a lot of the a lot of a lot of uh, sort of sides to the music business and and people in. And amongst it, have have literally fallen through the cracks. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not, not received any help as well, and that's you know I'm, I'm included in that. And and it was so it was a very tough time, but it was I think it was more. I think you know with every, with obviously everyone sort of struggles with the financial side of things, and everyone worries about how they're going to earn money during a, a period like that. And but it's the mental stress that gets to you, and, and I think that's I think that's the, the thing that that that's. Um, hindered a lot of people. Um, the, the the mental worry, the mental stress of the whole the whole period, the whole time, the whole thing um, has been very very difficult. But hopefully now, we with with you know the home first show and 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 you see now you you know you look on social media and you you see that bands are out sort of um, gigging and touring again. So hopefully that's 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 that light at the end of that tunnel that we're, we're yeah, finally yeah, starting yeah. to see again. And, and um, so we're just trying to keep as, as positive an attitude as possible over it all and look forward to the tour in October and then the rest of the stuff that's coming up the, uh, during the year and then into February next year, January and February next year, which we're doing some more stuff in the UK. And we just need to uh, just keep on building towards that and just keep a positive mental attitude and, you know, what will be will be. Yeah, because I know um, reading from you, from what you put on Facebook and so on, you, every so often you, you like to go on your bike and go off into the, the mountains and sort of have a, a bit of a chill out there. You, yeah. That that really helps you, does it? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think um, I think generally exercise is, is the best yeah. thing for, for people, um, especially when there's there's a lot of stress involved. I f- certainly find that it sort of if I if I go for a nice walk in, in the hills, it's 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 something that just relaxes me. And even if I if I'm on the motorbike as well, and, um, it just it's something that just de stresses you and just just gives you that sort of space to breathe a little bit. And yeah, and, and definitely like especially walking up the hills when you, you know, you, you get out of breath and you, <laughs> you get a bit of a sweat on and it certainly, it certainly starts the brain ticking again and it certainly works. So I, it's, it's yeah. a great thing to do. And, and as often as I can, I like to try and do that. So yeah, it, it, it definitely is a, it's a good help. And during lockdown, have you written in, in many new songs at all? We are working on quite a few new tunes at the moment. Um, you know, it's, it's always the same with me. <laughs> I start one, I never finish it, yeah. and then I move on to another one, and I don't quite finish that either, and then I move on. So I end up with about five, six, or seven different ideas uh, that I, I keep playing around with, and I keep bouncing back and forward to to from one to the next. Yeah. And uh, it's 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 a terrible way to work, but <laughs> but it's just how I've always done it. My brother can uh, my brother will start a song, finish it, won't leave it alone till it's done. That's it. I sort of tend to just go back and forward, but. It's not done too badly in the past, has it? So I'll, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll stick with it. <laughs> but we're getting there. Yeah, because we, we want to start working on on, on um, material for, for another album, really, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You, know, you, know, you know, Maverick um, seems, still seems to me like uh, Maverick's a brand new album, but it's, you know, it's been out over a year now. And, and uh, it's, unfortunately, during a period where, we, we couldn't tour and we couldn't really do a lot of a lot of things with it, but um, we still managed to do very well very well out of it as well. And uh, yeah, so we want to we want to try and get working on the next the next batch for the next album. Yeah, well that's that's some good news. Yeah, because I was just going to mention Maverick here. Um, obviously, it must have been quite difficult bringing it out in the middle of the pandemic and not being able to go on the road to to promote it. You know, but yeah, you, you, you know, said well, you still did all right with it though. Yeah, it was one of those decisions we had to we had to face. It, yeah. was, it was either it was either do nothing, and then and then have nothing to to, mm. to promote the band during a period where, you know, no, nothing was happening. Mm. Or we thought, well, do we we need we need to bring an album out anyway. Let's let's just do it, and, and you know, and it gives it gives the people something to listen to while they're while they're stuck at home. Um, I, what that meant for us in terms of uh, you know promotion and publicity and, and and the chance to to sort of move as many many of the units as possible was a little mm. bit respected, but that is a sacrifice we were prepared to make because yeah. we felt that we needed to give uh, our fans um, something. We needed to give them some new music and and we wanted to do it, so um, we were more than happy. But, but yeah, uh, hopefully, hopefully the next one will be a bit different. And you'll we'll see it on the road and and you know we'll be touring with Maverick. Um, we haven't had a chance to play really any of the. No, that, that's right. Yeah. We've had one yeah. show that we played in a few yeah. weeks back, and and you know we, we managed to fit in a few of the new ones then. But it was it was more a case of, uh, you know, we, we wanted a kind of party night for the fans as well. So we played a lot of the older, familiar stuff as well as mm. waste in a few of the new ones. But I think for the tour, we'll, we'll, we'll put some more of the Maverick album in there. And yeah, uh, yeah, they, they've. You know they've had they've had the album long enough now, so it's uh, it's, it's the songs are probably more familiar to them. Yeah, yeah. Here on stage rather than I never like to do a brand new album and then come out and play all the songs because yeah, you 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 leave people sort of standing, you know, pondering and listening and and you know, and it's like you forget that you know you've got to entertain them as well. So you don't want them sort of standing all night wondering or thinking about maybe arguing with themselves whether or not they like this song or not yet <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but by the th- by the time october comes i think it, i think it'll be safe to put in quite a few more and we'll, we'll, we'll get yeah. straight a few more of the new ones uh, uh from maverick yeah because um one of the tracks um on maverick which seems to have become quite a, a favorite of the fans is when my winter comes and <laughs> you you perform that almost solo at um home Firth. And that that went down well, but it's it's something that's sort of grown on, on a lot of fans. So, what's the story behind the song, and you know why do you think it sort of resonates so much with fans, really? Well, I, I, to be honest, I mean, I think it resonates with with a lot of the fans, especially the King King fans. You know, where you know, 
you know, we, we we're all we're all of a certain age and and and, and maybe above. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let, let's let's say that let's say that as nicely as possible. Um, so I think that I think that the lyrical content of when my winter comes is, I think a lot of people sort of start to, well, as you get older, you start facing your mortality, don't you? And I think yeah, that yeah. You, 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 and I think you know if you listen to the words of that song, you you know you're, there's a there's a man sort of as a young man looking forward and then, you know, as, as an older man sort of looking at himself in the mirror thinking, who's this? You know, yeah. I don't recognise this, this, this old, the old face in the mirror. And, and you know, you realise that the, those days are gone and you can't yeah. get them back and we can't do anything about time. And uh, it's the one thing we, we cannot buy in life. And uh, yeah. and uh, we, we, we face the facts that, you know, you'll never be as young as you were. And uh, and I think that's I think that maybe resonates with a lot of the, the, the King King fans. It's uh, yeah, yeah. Even, even with me, uh, you know, it does. But you know, uh, you know, originally I was originally I was asked to to write the song um, for a film. All right. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was, uh, it was it was a it was a film, and uh, which I, 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 it never actually got used in the movie, but um, it was a it was a film, and I was given the description. Um, and uh, and I thought, well, okay, I need to for me to write a song and for it to actually mean something, I need to find a way to to write about this that that I can I can be honest about myself. I can I can portray truly mm, that, that, mm. so that it comes across in, a, in an honest and passionate yeah, way. Yeah. So, so I just sort of dug into those kind of those kind of feelings about life and and mortality, and um, and that's that's what appeared. Yeah, and it's going to be very popular. So yeah, yeah, it does, it does go down well. Yeah. Um, do do the fans ever influence you in you know what songs are played in the set, or you know do people send requests and you say, oh yeah, we haven't done that for a bit, you know, or or is it always what the band decides really? Well, I mean, we we generally yeah, I mean generally we you know we decide um we decide what we're going to play, of course, but um you but you you always have in mind that you know which ones are the fan favourites and. And you tend to you tend to play those 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 kind of songs, but because you know that you know that they, they you know that you kind of know they want them because yeah. you see this the, the social media and you see the chat and everyone talks about oh I hope they play this and I love this song and yeah. you don't yeah. start chatting about a song that they like and then before you know it you've you've got a list of you know everyone's sort of ten minutes later everyone's sort of you know chatting about different songs so you know kind of which ones they want to hear but. Um, luckily enough, we we love playing them, so it's uh, it's it's an <laughs> yeah, easy decision. Yeah. It's not like oh right, okay, we've got to play this one because they want to hear it. All the songs, you know, we still love, so it's, yeah. uh, mm. I'm not sick of any of them yet. So when I get <laughs> bored and tired of a song, that's when it gets dropped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it's it's uh, well over two years now since um, Lindsay Coulson and Wayne Proctor left the band, mm. and you you've got you obviously you've still got jo Johnny Dyke on keyboards and. You brought in Xander Green Green Shields on on bass and Andrew Scott on drums, and that seemed to be the new band. And then all of a sudden, you announced your brother has joined the band as well. So, mm -hmm. so what was the thinking behind that then? Well, um, you know, I, I you know we've we've sort of we've, we've been over all the all the stuff with with bringing Andrew and, and Xander in. Um, you know, I needed I needed a, a, a change a lineup, and I wanted to. You know, there was things that I wanted to do with the band mm. musically and and stuff like that 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 I, I felt that I needed I needed a new freshness I needed a new approach and for the vision that I had and yeah. still have of, of what I want the band to do and mm. I knew that I needed to I needed to change things and and that was that was that was the decision there but actually you know bringing bringing uh, Stevie into the band was was something that was actually. It was it was something that was on my mind and that I'd been sort of quietly planning for a long time. Yeah, uh, yeah. a long time before it ever happened. Um, I knew that at some point I, I I wanted to have another guitar there and an extra vocal for 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 backing yeah, vocals. Yeah. Um, backing vocals uh, are, are, a, are a, a bit of a the, the, <laughs> it's a it's it's been something that's very very important to me and it always has been. Uh, mm. It's been something that that's been in in me since I was a teenager. Um, it was very important to have strong backing vocals and yeah. to build that up, and that's and that's where we're at now. But yeah, I mean the the whole I needed another guitar because there was there's you know you get you get to a point where songs start getting 
slightly a bit more complicated and and my my biggest thing about being in the band at the moment is 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 engaging with the audience yeah yeah uh and you know if you're if you're sort of spinning too many plates you know if you're if you're you know you're doing all this you know all, all the time on the stage it, it, you kind of you, it's easy to lose that that connection with the audience and I, and i really want to make sure that that's a really important thing to make sure i'm always always connected with the audience engaging with them all the time um, so I, I, I needed a bit of help, wanted a bit of help behind me so that I, I can sort of concentrate more on being a singer, engaging with the audience and, yeah, sort of, yeah. you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, and that, that creates more of an atmosphere as well. You, you, I want to draw them in and I want everyone to, to sort of get you know, immersed in the whole evening. Mm. the whole concert and, and just, just absolutely have a, the, the best time they possibly can and and that's my responsibility to make that happen so mm. um, it was it was always in the plan to, to get someone in and to be honest I wouldn't I wouldn't have worked with another guitar player other than my brother so yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I've got you know there's, there's so many great guitar players out there there, there's there's loads of them everywhere, but I, the only the only one I wanted to work with in, in a band was was Stephen. So mm. um, and we have a we have a we have a great energy together, a great chemistry. It's very natural. Everyone's seen that over the years with the Nemo Brothers, of course, with that sort of, you know, there's 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 most of the time there's there's no even a need for uh, any sort of visual communication. It's just that we know what's going to happen. We mm. I, he, I can tell when. He can he uh, he'll play a certain note or he'll move a certain way or do something, and I know that that's there's a change coming. I'm the same for him. It's, you know, we've just got that sort of it's almost telepathic, um, which is which is tremendous. And I don't think it's something you can pay for. It's it's yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's so invaluable. Um, uh, so yeah, yeah. So it, um, and and my plan was to before the sort of the pandemic hit as well, my, my plan was to sort of ease them in a little bit so that, that we so that we made sure, you know, from both sides that, that everyone was happy to yeah. mm. to be in to, to be there. And and uh, so my plan was to maybe just pull Stevie in for doing a few festivals here and there and just like the odd sort of the odd sort of gig here and there and then sort of ease them in and, and, and eventually just have them there full time if, if that's what he wanted to do. Yeah. And, um, but it sort of that all, that plan got taken away from me, so so we just sat down and we just we just had a bit of a chat and and um, and I said, right, are you are you in then? And he's like, yeah, no bother. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that was that was that. So uh, uh, luckily enough, it worked out very very well, and um, you know he's he's managed to to fit in with the, with the band and how I wanted it to sound, and he's he's gelled in with the rest of the boys really yeah. really well. And it, and you know and it, and it's and it's you know and it and it's just been it's just been great. It's you know between between him and 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 Xander there who, who you know obviously we we worked to get we started together. Xander and yeah. I started yeah. the Blackwater Blues band, you know, and yeah. and we recruited Stevie into that band. So it's like having you know it's like, it's like having you know your 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 family on the road with you, you know, literally, you know, and yeah. um, even 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 our mother. <laughs> looked upon Xander as our other son, you know. So it's, yeah. uh, it's uh, and and you know with with the special sort of mm. the special relationship that I have with Johnny, um, Johnny and I do all the, the sort of most of the the right yeah. now for, for the band. And Johnny and I have a, a sort of um, w we've got our own little thing between us that we you know we 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 just kind of we we quietly run the show if you know what I mean. We just kind of <laughs> yeah. uh, we just we keep things going and we we keep each other going and. And you know, Andrew was the was the relative stranger coming into the band, and and that's always that's always worrying from from both sides. I, I, I think as well with for him coming in as a, a guy who's coming into a band with with a bunch of people who are all very familiar with one another. But Andrew is just such a special lad, and and mm. you know he's, he's he's part of he's part of King King, and I, and 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 I don't you know I I, I don't see any other any other way of how that could ever be now it's yeah he's one of the family and he's he's a he's a, a special talent uh one of the most talented musicians um i've i've ever ever witnessed in my life he's, mm. he's an absolutely outstanding drummer and a, and a fantastic guy uh and and he and he just he, from day one he just fitted in with with the boys and he fitted in with all of us and he we've got all the same humor and 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 you know we just we just get on really well and that's so important 
more important than anything else because when you're traveling mm. on the road, mm. you can't get on. Yeah, it's just yeah. not going to work. Yeah. Uh, but he's just been he's just been absolutely fantastic, and um, he's his enthusiasm for the band is is um, is, is, is astonishing to me. It's just been it's been such a breath of fresh air to see that kind of enthusiasm for for wanting to be in the band. And you know, Andrew's got you know he's got talents coming out of his ears for in, in the terms of how sort of what sort of different kinds of drumming and music that he likes. But he loves the challenge of King King. Where, yeah. where it's where it's about something different. That's about being being part of a unit and playing the songs and being the, the songs being the most important thing rather than the individual. And he's brilliant at that. He's just fantastic. And I, I you know, literally, I, I couldn't ask for a, for a better bunch of lads now. And and mm. I, just what it means now to me is, I can now relax and I can just I can now uh, sort of execute the, the the ideas in my head now for, yeah, yeah. for what I want to do with the band and and going forward. It's 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 so exciting, and I'm I'm so happy that after all these years of playing in the industry and being in the bands over the years, I still have a, a, a giddy schoolboy enthusiasm for this. I mm. love it. Yeah, yeah. And is that right that you're you're now managing yourselves because you know you, you obviously had Alan Robinson, and then you had the American guys. But you is that right? You you're just doing everything. No, no, we um we have um 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 uh, Barney Barney from the Gig Cartel. Oh right, um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, no just the tickets and that, yeah. Yeah, he's he's been he's been uh, he's been managing the band for for a lot of while now over the lockdown. So um so he's been doing a fantastic job and, and yeah. we've, we've really hit it off um mm. uh, in terms of business and and as and and, and as a, a friendly relationship as well because that's very very important to me as well. We need yeah, yeah. we need people that are like minded. We need people who are who are who invested emotionally in the band mm. and believe in it and yeah and he does and, and you know we've we've been working with with these guys for for a long time they, they do all the uk tours as well so yeah, yeah. promotion and stuff like that so we, we we knew one another as well so that was that was great but yeah i mean we, we talk all the time and we you know we've got we've got the same ideas and the same ambitions about where we want to put the band so yeah it's, it's been it's been a, a it's been a great thing to happen so we're very, very pleased with that. So hopefully, you know, you know, all the we've got all the right parts in the right places. <laughs> so it's onwards just, and just forward, always, yeah, forwards now. Yeah, because I was going to say to you, do you, do you ever have a say in in what sort of places you play, or, or do you leave that all up to to Barney or or the agents? Oh, no, or whatever? It's, um, we um we I I I I have the I generally have the overall say in everything that goes on. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. You guys just do a great job in executing it. <laughs> um, so yeah, but you know, but it's not you know I'm not I'm not the dictator type. You know, it's, it's, no, it's, uh, no. everything's uh, you know we we have a we have a good democracy. We chat about things, but yeah, I generally I like to make sure that I oversee all the things that are going on. And just luckily enough, I've got people that are very talented to to do those things. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned um, the Nimmo brothers, because you were going to do a few dates early in the summer, and that, of course, they got cancelled because I was going to come and see you at, at the stables in Milton Keynes. But uh, are, are the plans to do more Nimmo brothers dates, or well, is that going to be shelved for the time being? No, really? uh, you know, we, obviously, the, the, the dates were supposed to be in for 2020, um, for the 25th anniversary of the Nimmo brothers. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but obviously that that had to be postponed, and and we didn't mind doing them the following year if if that was going to be possible. But then that wasn't able to happen either. Mm. So then we thought, well, we, there's no point really in putting them into the next year because um, I'm, I don't really want. To, I didn't. We didn't really want to do 25th anniversary shows on the 27th year. Plus, you know, it, it, by that point, you know things are going to be, you know, very busy for King King as well. Yeah. So we don't want to cause a lot of confusion and get things starting to get in the way of one another. So we just thought, look, let's 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 put it aside for, for just now. Let's concentrate on King King. Um, I think that's, at the moment, that's the best thing to do, especially with Stevie coming into the band as well. And he agreed as well that, no, let's let's... Let's concentrate solely on King King for a moment. Let's let's do that, and you know, and if and if we want to do something for the thirtieth anniversary, then so be it. We can we can mm. maybe throw in a yeah, handful yeah. of shows. Um, but other than that, we're just we're just we're just sort of said, you know, let's 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 put everything aside for now because that and that included Stevie's band as well, and you know, he understands that as well. So mm. so everything is it's all about King King at the moment, and we want to yeah. we want to keep it that way. And 
luckily and happily, everyone's everyone's happy to do that. Because mm. not everyone knows that you you have your own radio show on Paisley FM. Uh, is that something that was just in in uh, the the lockdown, or is it something you're going to you could do all the time now? Really? Well, you know, it's um, radios uh, radio presenting's always been something that I've been interested in, and it's mm. you know it's it's a it's a it's a great thing. And it's a very difficult industry to break into as well. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was great to, it was it, well, it, it coincided with the, with the lockdown as well. But I, I didn't do it for that reason. But it no. just happened to it happened to work out pretty well during the work the lockdown because nothing was happening and everyone was stuck at home. So mm. on a Friday night they had a radio show uh, to listen to. So it, it kept people going as well. It was nice for for to stay connected to. To the fans as well, and you know, I would, and what I tried to do with that show is, it's kind of create a nostalgia. You know, I I think about the audience that, that that listens to the band, which is basically the audience that are listening to the radio show, and uh, and and you, I'm just trying to sort of take them back to their youth and, mm. and their youth and uh, and create that kind of nostalgic feeling along with now and again trying to trying to find some new music and stick it in there as well that that I feel that they might enjoy listening to as well. And uh, yes, but it's been great fun. I, I, I love doing the show, and um, and um, and I'll and I'll keep doing it, and 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 you know, in some kind of capacity, uh, whether it be whether it be the radio show, or, or maybe 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 I, I might actually add in a, a podcast as well. That some something like that, you know, and and you know, maybe chat about artists that I, that I really like and like to listen to, and have, who have influenced me over the years, and. Just uh, I, I enjoy these things. I enjoy I enjoy, yeah. I enjoy sort of I enjoy the the interaction. I enjoy the, the reaction from from the, the people listening as well. So it's good fun. Yeah, because another thing that you did differently was uh, you you played on this Blues Alive cruise uh, a year or so ago, and you got it again next year. I think. Um, yeah. it, how, how do you find those? Oh, do you know uh, do, doing the doing the cruise was. Um, it was it was it was absolutely amazing. It was a great experience, and mm. it was it was it was a fantastic time for everyone. I think it was it was good, especially at that time as well when we did the first one. Uh, you know, having had just sort of changed the lineup of the band, and everyone was sort of brand new, and and and, and a, a thing like that where you, where you're sort of you're 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 you're, on, you're at sea for five days or six days or whatever it was, and um, everyone's there together, and you're sort of. You're bonding together, you're gelling. Everyone's spending time with each other all the time, and we're, we're playing. We're playing some shows as well. It, it, it was a fantastic thing for us to do. It was a fantastic way for the band to sort of really tighten up mm. and, and and get close to one another as friends as well, and sort of connect to one another. It was it was brilliant. Plus, um, you know that that it was great to hang out with all the other bands. It was great to, to you know to chat to guys like Kenny Wayne Shepherd and Joe Bonamassa and. Joanne Taylor and, and you know just and meeting up with new bands that you loved and and meeting up with friends uh, mm. who you don't really get to see that often because we all do the same thing and you, yeah. know, you never get yeah. to never get to chat to your your, your friends or in other bands because uh, you know we're all busy doing the same thing all the time mm. but mm. yeah then of course we got invited on again and then it got postponed and, and then postponed again so it's it's going to be next year next August but um, I'm really looking forward to it because we uh, we set sail from Athens. Mm. And uh, and then we sail into Turkey and things like that. So it's places that I I, I really wanted to visit. So um, I may I may I may go there a few days early to Athens and before we get sailing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's worth it. Days, yeah, look at yeah. the ruins. Mm. Um, you know, I, I love all the Greek history stuff. So it's um, it's, it'll be nice to nice to actually see some of it in in, in person. Yeah, so that, yeah. So it's going to be great. And and, and as I say, it's it's a great thing for for all the bands to get together and and chat away and sort of. Get to know one another, and it's just it's a fun time. And the and the and the fans that come along and, and spend their money coming onto the cruise. I mean, it's it's um it's from what I hear from people as well. It's it's, it's a it's a cruise of a lifetime. They they, they love it, mm, you know. Mm. And and it's just such a such a great atmosphere the whole time that we, that we were there. Yeah, and it was so smooth as well on the water. It was like you would never have known you were actually in the water half the time. Apart from one night when it got a wee bit, the last evening when we were sort of sailing back towards Barcelona, it got a little bit, mm. just a wee bit kind of. But you know, <laughs> I've been I've been on I've been on ferries going up to up to Shetland and everything, and where you're 
well, you might get really choppy. Yeah. So yeah. A, little, a little wave now and again is nothing. Yeah. Like you've done that yeah. before. When, you, when you've had a Chinook helicopter follow you across yeah. just in case because it's so bad, you're up and down and side to side. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. You're prepared for anything after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you could you mention when when you touring, you know, you you're playing all these different places abroad and everything. Do you ever get much chance to visit the towns you're playing in, or is it just yeah, on the road all the time? You don't, you, you don't get a massive amount of time to to mm. check anywhere out. You're always so busy. Um, yeah. You know, you get on tour and it becomes sort of you you sort of you switch the brain to tour mode. And it becomes all about all about the business and all about the work, and you, you end up very very busy, and you, you get to all these. I mean, occasionally, you know, occasionally we've maybe arrived somewhere a day before, or we've had a maybe a, a rest day, and we stop yeah. somewhere, and I, you know, and if you're traveling, if you've got a distance to travel, especially abroad, and um, so you you maybe use one of the days as a travel day, so you maybe stop somewhere, yeah. you know. So I mean, and and. On those rare occasions, it's yeah, you get to see some places. It's it's it's, it's really beautiful, you know. Like you know, you, you maybe have a stop in Prague or Budapest or something like that, and it's, yeah. it's beautiful. You know, it's just amazing. It's yeah. it's a beautiful world out there, and I really miss I really <laughs> miss going and seeing it. You know, I've never yeah. spent this much time in Scotland <laughs> uh, since I was at school. And, and don't get me wrong, I love Scotland. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I need I need I need I need something else. I need to go somewhere yeah. now. I'm getting itchy. Yeah. <laughs> So it's only you know, just over a month now, isn't it, really, before you start playing in, yeah. in this country? And then I think you're going to um, Holland, is it? And, That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got more next year, Germany and more British states and the crew. Yeah. So there's something to look forward to for everyone. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's now starting to starting to look a bit healthier now. It's, and, um, you know, I, you know, and you see it now that, you know, when, when you know, the, the phone starts ringing more often and the emails start coming in more often and mm. uh, you realise that it's sort of you, you're back to business and, and um, that, that's great. That's that's been brilliant. Um, yeah. So so we're just now starting to prepare um, um, for the for the tour in October. We'll, we'll, we're going to start start rehearsals shortly and then um, and get ourselves prepared for it. So, um, yeah, it, it's just. It's just going to be so great just to get back to doing what we do and just uh, just getting into that routine again of traveling and being on the road and doing what we always have done. You know, it's, it's just it's going to be fantastic. And the kilt's going to come out again. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah that, you can't go on without the kilt. I've been off for home forth and, you know, luckily enough, it still fit me. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. It yeah. <laughs> still fits, though. Yeah. Uh, well, that, it's been great to, chatting to you, Alan, and um, we're looking forward to seeing you on the tour. And I'm sure you'll be happy playing live again because that's that's what you do, isn't it? Really. Absolutely. And, yeah, and thank you ever it. so much for your time and, and giving us giving us an interview today. So all the best, and keep a look out for King King. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers.